Hello and welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag Daily Show, where we show you one cool thing we are testing out here in the PC Mag Labs. And this is the HP Chromebook Times 2 or the, the, the Chromebook 10 The Chromebook 10 right? 2, yeah. The Chromebook 10 2. Apple nomenclature. I'm, I'm Sasha Segan, this is Matt Buzzy. This is an expensive Chromebook. It is an expensive Chromebook. Uh, ideally, or as, at least as Chromebooks started, they were, the idea was that they're cheap. They're right, right. 200, 300, 400 dollar. Well, the idea was that, was that Chrome OS mm -hmm. was kind of the evolution of the thin client OS. And yes. this just like takes me back because I'm elderly. And this is this is the, the evolution. Back in your day. Back in my day, we had terminals. <laughs> and they were these like computers <laughs> that connected to another computer far away and they didn't really do a lot of the processing themselves. They, they Really, the processing was in the cloud. That, which is, I understand is a series of tubes. Yes, it was, it was deep in the tubes. Okay. And so Chromebooks, initially, I believe, mm -hmm. were an attempt to do these kinds of cloud-based laptops, which would be inexpensive yep. and virus-free and really only run a browser, but that's not really what's happened in that's the end. That's not where it ended up going, yeah. So there uh -huh. are some cheap alternatives out there still. This is a $600 Chromebook, to which mm -hmm. I know many of you are automatically saying, why would you do that? Mm -hmm. um, and that's fair, depending on your use case. Um, but the HP X2 Chromebook, if mm -hmm. you are going to buy an expensive Chromebook, and we'll get into why you might want to do that and what it has for the price, uh, is the is a, our favorite, our new editor's choice Chromebook that's not, you know, super cheap. Okay, so now looking at this, uh, initially, the first thing that comes to me is the build looks really nice. It is really nice, and you can be you can be fooled to it's thinking, detachable. yeah, which is a rare a rare um, feature for something like this. Mm -hmm. This is a bit. This is a bit hefty. It's mm -hmm. kind of thick. This is actually really light. It's about three pounds with those together. It's not even one and a half pounds, just the screen. Is there a battery in here? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Then it's just this solid to make it lappable. I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I like this because I really don't like... You're not the floppy. You don't like I don't the floppy like the surface, surface type cover. Right? I don't like the surface type cover. That's part of why I have a Surface Book mm -hmm. instead of a Surface Pro. That makes sense. Um, and like this has the like reassuring solidity of a real keyboard. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what you have here, keyboard aside, which it does come with, unlike, again, unlike the Surface. Um, mm -hmm. You have a 12.3 inch screen, it's 2400 by 1600, so it's a bit of a weird resolution, but it's a high resolution. Mm -hmm. um, it does look great, looks sharp. Yeah. Obvious, obviously a touch screen if you're gonna use it in mode. Glossy, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. the whole shebang. Mm -hmm. um, obviously touch, nice and crisp though. Um, you can hold this, see how light yeah. it actually is. It's, just it's tablet quite mode. light, a little yeah. warm. Yeah. yeah, a little warm. What's our, what's our processor here? Um, so it's a Core M, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it's a speedy, it's a speedy Core M. It's, it's a mm -hmm. snappy system. Obviously, 599, you're not going to get a high, you're not going to even get an i5, or obviously an i7 would be the, okay. the Core i7 would be the dream, and but now, not at this price range. We have a couple of ports. I see there's a USB-C here, mm -hmm. micro SD card slot, there's a USB-C here. Yep, USB-C on either side, that's how you charge it also. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice aluminum, or this is ceramic. It's a nice ceramic finish. It's the same lid on their on their premium uh, Spectre models. Of now, I don't spend a lot, meaning any time, with Chromebooks. Sure. Uh, so the ports on it, like, can Chromebooks use peripherals? Could I plug this into a printer? Um, with yeah, with this stuff. Uh, if you have if you have these kinds, mm -hmm. not regular um, not regular USB, um, which probably for a printer might cause you some trouble. You can dongle it. New, yeah, you can dongle it. It's dongleable. I think maybe only newer printers might go the USB-C mm -hmm. route. Um, as you can see, that's a really easy, uh, really easy fix. This is, as you said, sturdy, and it, it doesn't lean back super far, mm -hmm. but um, it leans back enough, and this doesn't get flimsy because it's so, it's so sturdy. And I see we've got a pen. Yes, the stylus is included. The little holder loop is included, um, so you can slot it in there. Uh, again, unlike the Surface, you, that's kind of an optional buy. Mm -hmm. um, but for 599, this is in the upper echelon of um, of Chromebook pricing, but not the most expensive. Right, that would be the Google Pixel Book. Yes, that thing is very pricey. It's like yeah. a thousand dollar Chromebook. Yeah, which very much seems kind of crazy. We'll talk about what this can do and why you'd want let's that take, speed. Let's take question. What type of customer are they targeting with a high end Chromebook? That's a good question. There are professional use cases where you could do all of your work on a Chromebook if you do simple work. Okay, um, so the, the word the, processing is a good yeah, one. Yeah, one of the one of the use cases I've heard for the Pixel Book, mm -hmm. unfortunately, is using it off label, which is that uh, there's kind of a Pixel Book cult among software developers who just dual boot Linux onto it. Mm, that makes sense. And then they're like using it in the command line. Because it's like a nice, clean, simple 
it's an, exactly. Computer. It's a nice, clean, simple system that hasn't been infected by Windows in any way. Sure. And so they turn it into a dev machine, but that's not what it's actually designed to be sold for. Yeah. Yeah, there, are, there aren't a ton of, um, there aren't admittedly a ton of use cases where I think you'll get, I want to say the full power, because it's not like it's that powerful. Um, it more adds up to the nicer build and feature mm -hmm. set than it does like more speed, because on the whole, this isn't that different performance-wise from some of the less expensive Chromebooks. It is on the faster end. The Core M3 um, was snappy. You can look in the review for all the, all the benchmark charts. But like when you say word processing, you mean Google Docs, right? I mean Docs, not, there, not Microsoft Word. Right, there's not like a more, I guess I guess there is a web-based Microsoft word Office, Office 365 yeah, yeah, yeah. interface. Um, but this, for you know the majority of what you're going to do are these Android apps, which, I mean, Chrome, got, Chrome OS got way more useful when they added the ability to use Android oh, apps. Oh, so you could before, run. Before that, it was just, you know, it was just the Chrome browser stuff. So now you could you can, run Office for Android. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so yeah, anything that's anything that's uh, could be on your Android phone could be here. This is kind of a good middle ground if you're like, I maybe you could just use an Android tablet, but I also kind of need a laptop. Um, also, this Android good, tablets are kind of dying. Yeah. So yeah. like, not that many good ones out there anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so this would be a good alternative to that. Again, five ninety nine is a little a little aggressive, mm -hmm. um, especially considering because it's a Chromebook, you only get the thirty two gigs of internal flash storage, which if you were to compare that to a cheap Windows laptop, even like a $500, $600 Windows laptop, probably get a terabyte of storage these now, days. Now, that said, you can sock a micro, a micro SD card in here, and those come into up to 400 gig sizes. Yeah, so if you really do need the storage, please. So why are Android tablets dying? Is are they just getting kind of squeezed out? Why are Android tablets dying? Um, so Android tablets are succeeding and have always succeeded at the very low end. Mm -hmm. uh, the Amazon tablets are doing fine. Uh, the primary reason Android tablets are dying is that uh, the iPad has an absolutely gorgeous app ecosystem. Mm. Um, Android app developers have never really targeted the tablet form factor, so there's always been issues with scaling and, with scaling and formatting and how things look. And uh, Apple's dragged the iPad price down so far, down to three, $329, 399 it, lowering it, lowering Exactly, it. that uh, Android manufacturers can't undercut that with quality products. Mm -hmm. And they have to admit that their app ecosystem isn't as good. Right. So, uh, so why do it? <laughs> so why do it? And then Windows tablets have come in too. Mm -hmm. Windows two and ones have come in, yeah. starting at around five hundred, with massively better professional apps. Yeah. So I think yeah, what it comes down to is the reason the Andro the reason Android tablets are dying is because Android tablet apps never really made it there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It just made yeah. The alternatives make a little more sense, a little nicer, a little, the ecosystem is, mm -hmm. is a big part of it. And so with Chromebooks, now Chromebooks are running, you know, basically have to run Android apps in a tablet mode, but mm -hmm. I do think that most people still rely on the browser for most things on a Chromebook. Right, I would say, I would say so. But yeah. apps, apps makes it easier to do things like your Netflix, your games, right, your, right. so yeah, it has its uses. Um, like the, you might prefer like the Google Maps app to the mm -hmm. Maps website. And even at and even at five ninety nine here, so I was saying like one of the reasons Android tablets uh, are not succeeding is because the iPad has undercut them. Mm -hmm. But even at five ninety nine, uh, this is you know definitely less expensive than an iPad Pro. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, it is undercutting Apple's professional iPad line. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So as far as alternatives within this space, you have the. Uh, the Pixel Book, you have the, um, we have the Asus Flip was our editor's choice, but that mm -hmm. you can't detach the keyboard, so that's mm -hmm. a lot clumsier kind of as a tablet. Um, Samsung also does an, a nice, again, more expensive, um, unsurprisingly, a more expensive take on a Chromebook. I think it's even pricier than this. But what about um, $600 Windows detachables? $600 Windows detachables, now you have the Surface Go, which mm -hmm. is even tinier, but again, Windows, like full Windows running, and the performance you know, might be mm -hmm. here or there, but. Um, you, if you know you want Windows, which for some people is not negotiable, mm -hmm. um, that's a great jumping in point, uh, even though it's a little tinier, a little more cramped. So unlike, unlike that, it's a good segue. Uh, typing on this is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, these keys are bouncy. Uh, again, the keyboard's included, which even for the Surface Go, it's not, which is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't love that. I know they no, never I like, include I like, the, I like that it the includes keyboard, the keyboard, absolutely. Um, yeah, they not including the keyboard on even the Surface Go. No, which... I am just staring at this and struggling with the who is it for problem. I know, it's, yeah. it's kind of, yeah. Um... I, I keep thinking, I keep thinking, uh, uh, 
elementary and middle school kids with rich families. Right, because normally, know? if you're gonna get it for a whole classroom, just go for one of the cheaper ones. Right. You don't care what happens to them, you know. There are people out there who, again, don't need a lot of processing power, but they want something nice to travel with. Um, it has well, no, the I, form factor, like, it makes sense for some people, I just don't think that market's especially large. I Your say, office probably gives you a Windows laptop. My on. daughter is in middle school, mm -hmm. okay, and just this year, she has started to need something other than a browser. Right. So up until now, for like the past, like since she's, and like, she probably had to start using a computer for various things in like third grade, mm -hmm. but all the way third through sixth grades, all she really needed was a browser. So a Chromebook would have been absolutely appropriate. Yeah. Um, now she wants to run pro animation software and I need something with a giant external GPU, oh, yeah. like a Bitcoin mining rig or something. <laughs> and it's terrifying, but we'll get to that another we'll time. That, yeah. um, but uh, but, but that's, that's the core market right. for Chromebooks. So I guess this is just if you have money and want a nicer one. Want a nicer, it's the nicer, yeah, it's the nicer yeah. version of the thing. It doesn't necessarily do a ton more than the other things that also do things, but this thing is the nicest thing. Wow, we are so enthusiastic yeah. about this Editor's Choice yes. product. Because again, it is the best among its its class. Yes. But it's sort of a, it's always a use case thing. Can anyone out there defend high-end Chromebooks to us? Please, please. <laughs> um, yeah, you get good battery life, huh? Uh huh. Eleven hours. Eleven hours. That's pretty okay. good. Now, uh, normally when we're up here talking about laptops, there are benchmarks. Are there even benchmarks on this? There. So we don't run our normal Windows suite of um, mm -hmm. of tests. We do have a series of. Oh, now I can step over here Let's and it. show you. Um, there's a couple because they're browser based, mm -hmm. so you can run them. Mm. Um, first of all, we have a boot time test, how long it takes to boot from, from completely shut down. The answer is quickly. Quickly, eight seconds. It's, you know, that's pretty standard, but that's pretty quick also. Um, so this is when we could run CR Expert. These just measure general productivity. As you see, it's on the higher side. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I would go farther than that. I would say this torches other Chromebooks most, except for the Pixelbook. Except for the, good, the other expensive one. Yeah, like we're and talking Samsung's, about- Samsung's, which is also expensive, is not, is not hanging with these. Almost twice the speed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it is doing something for the money. Like I said, you are getting performance uh, boost in addition to the nicer build. It's just not huge, mm -hmm. but uh, it is faster. It is very yeah, much you're faster. Doing your, you're doing your, your limited Chromebook applications yes. will run brilliantly um, on this higher end device. Yeah, one of the biggest selling points, frankly, is the seamless detachable nature of this. For a Chromebook, mm -hmm. that's pretty, um, as Eric says in his review, that's kind of a landmark feature for this kind of category. Um, you don't usually get, if it's done, it's not done as, as nicely, mm -hmm. and uh, if it's done at all. So usually you get kind of, because this is, you know, it's it's good that it's sturdy, but it's a little but unwieldy, it's a little heavy, yeah. and it's heavy. It's much heavier than the, the whole thing itself. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a much nicer tablet experience. What does the pen work in? What, what applications are there? What's, for a, pens? what's a Henway? Um, the pen. I mean, the pen works in. So I don't know. I wouldn't. There's a lot of. There's like a bunch of Android phones that have Styli, but like why? Um, why? I <laughs> but guess like what could, apps would you use? I guess you the could use Autodesk for? Sketchbook. Yeah, anything you that you use. would. Any so uh, my, my, okay. my thought process there was anything you could. One you note. Would, you would bring up your phone and scribble. Okay. You okay. could pretty much so do that. So it's Android here. apps. I have to keep mm -hmm. remembering the Android apps here because I, I still I, I'm still in the old mindset of a Chromebook is about the browser. Right. And I have to remember the Android apps. Yeah, if it was just browser, your use case would be pretty limited for, mm -hmm. for including this. But the Android um, apps can't. Yeah, there might be some sketching you could do, um, yeah. note taking, mm -hmm. um, which again, if you if you pop it out of out of tablet mode and you just take it to a meeting nice and you're, you're just kind of doing one of these. Yeah, yeah. yeah, perfectly. Which is good that they include the stylus for that reason because mm -hmm. otherwise there's almost like, I mean. Does the stylus why, have a battery? Why would you buy this? Yes, it's just, it's just uh, triple A's. Oh, okay, quadruple okay. A's, I think. Okay. Uh, any more questions out there? No, so the HP Chromebook X2 is our editor's choice for Chromebooks in that it has great performance. It is more expensive than other Chromebooks, but it is less expensive than one very high profile Chromebook, which will probably be yes. updated next week, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Yeah, yeah, there, there is a Pixelbook update coming. So if you're, if you're interested in the absolute finest of the Chromebooks, the, the, yeah. the caviar of Chromebooks, then you might want to wait for the Google event on October 9th. But otherwise, this HP Chromebook X2, it's lovely if you're looking for a higher end Chromebook. Still cheaper than plenty of nice Windows laptops because yep. the bottom line of, um, th I guess that's, that's if you're gonna take one takeaway, the Windows laptops at this price point are not nearly as nice as Windows laptops around $1,000. Yeah. 
the, the, this build quality is sort of equivalent to those nicer window right. laptops. So yes, it's less expensive because it's just Chrome, but it, the build quality is, is up with what you get for a more expensive laptop. For your $600, so. you're getting what feels like a $1,000 laptop. Yes, even yes. if it's just running Chrome OS. Okay. Well, thank you all for watching. This has been One Cool Thing from PCMag.com. We will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. live on Facebook with another cool thing. On YouTube, of course, please like and subscribe. We will have another cool thing every day. Thank you.